The year is 471 BCE. The plebeians had just gained a right to elect special tribunes to protect their own interests in the field of Roman politics. These tribunes were some of the most powerful offices within Rome, with the power to veto laws, propose legislation for the plebeians, and even the power to call the senate to order. You can see then just how effective a protector the plebeian tribunes could be. However, there was a problem. You see, in 471 BCE, tribunes were elected via the Curite Assembly. This assembly included not only the plebeians, but also the patricians. As well as this, since every Roman citizen was given a vote, anyone with enough money, the patricians mostly, could influence the vote through Rome's patron system. This allowed the patricians to come together and use their massive amounts of resources to elect tribunes that were at least friendly to the patrician cause, and thus protected the built-in patrician dominance. As you can imagine, this did not sit right with many of the plebeians. And so, in 471 BCE, the tribune of the plebs decided to do something about it. What did he do? Did it eliminate patrician influence? And why did the patricians let it happen? Let's talk about it. Before we get any further into today's episode, I just want to quickly ask that you subscribe and like if you enjoy my content. It really helps the channel out and it motivates me to make more content. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Our story starts with a Roman named Gnaeus Genecius. Gnaeus was the tribune of the plebs in 473 BCE. In that year, Gnaeus ordered the arrest of Gnaeus Manelius Volso and Lucius Furius Medenius, the previous year's consuls. Gnaeus alleged that these consuls used their power to block agrarian reform. We aren't told exactly what issues they blocked, but agrarian reform in general was a very important issue for the plebeians as a whole. We are told that Gnaeus was already hated by the patricians, probably because they had been unable to stop him from being elected. As you can imagine, these arrests further inflamed their hatred. Gnaeus relied on his brother, Titus Genecius, to bring the former consuls to trial. Titus was already experienced in this issue, as he had been the person to bring charges against Titus Manaeus Lantius, consul in 477, and Spurius Servilius Prisca Structurus, consul in 476. Both of these consuls had been charged with military incompetence, and both were successfully prosecuted. Right before the trial was scheduled to occur, Gnaeus Manelius and Lucius Furius both appealed to their supporters, claiming that this trial was a result of plebeian tyranny, and that if they were found guilty, it would make anyone holding high office little more than sacrificial animals. This must have worked, or Rome's famous patron system came into play, as Gnaeus Genecius was found murdered in his own home on the day of the trial. This was a massive deal, as remember the plebeian tribunes were sacrosanct. This meant that to do any harm to the tribunes was seen as an attack on the gods themselves. The punishment for breaking this synchronicity? Death. So you can imagine how quickly this situation could spiral out of control. The two consuls had just given a speech deriding the tribune, and then the tribune was found dead in his home? Who could have possibly done such a thing? Well, the Roman Senate did not want to let the plebeians come to their own conclusions, so they needed to distract them. To do so, the Senate ordered Lucius Aemilius Mamercus and Vopicus Julius Alulus, the new consuls for the year, to levy troops. The hope was that most of the plebeians would enlist and would be distracted from the murder of Gnaeus. Apparently, the other tribunes were too fearful to intervene. Personally, I think fearful is code for being influenced by patrician money, but I digress. This likely would have worked if it hadn't been for Valerio Publius. Valerio Publius was a former centurion, but he had been called to serve as a common soldier. He refused. And you can see where he was coming from. He earned that rank, and to have it taken away just for a distraction? Yeah, I can see why he was not happy. But his episode of defiance pissed the consuls off. They ordered his arrest, and further ordered that he be whipped by their lictors. Some sort of scuffle ensued before Valerio broke free of the lictors and appealed to the crowd of plebeians for protection. The plebeians responded enthusiastically, and the consuls were so scared of the growing crowd that they and their lictors retreated into the Curia Hostilia, the Senate House, for protection. We now had no problem. This could easily escalate into a secession, or possibly even a real riot. The Senate, likely sensing that the situation was quite volatile, backed down. They rescinded the order to enlist, and promised to make no moves against the plebeians for the remaining year. Both of the former consuls were allowed to go free, and the charges were dropped. However, this did not mean the end of the issue. The next year, 472 BCE, 
Valerio Publius, the centurion from just a minute ago, was elected tribune of the plebs. We can assume that this election occurred because of his popularity following his episode in the Forum. Many of the patricians in the Senate expected him to foment violence between the two classes in Rome as revenge for the episode in the Forum. Instead, he chose to pursue a much more peaceful path. He proposed a law, what would become the Lex Publia, that would transfer the elections of the tribunes from the Curite Assembly to the Tribal Assembly. So what was the big deal? Well, the Curite Assembly was organized around age, property, and wealth. This meant that the patricians had an outsized influence on the assembly. After all, they were the ones with the property and the wealth. Because of this, they could easily influence the elections of tribunes. While we know that they didn't always succeed in getting their own candidates elected, just look at Gaius Genecius, more often than not, they were at least able to influence the process. In the tribal assembly, each tribe, based around where individuals lived in the city, was given a single vote. This removed some of the influence of money and property from the election. As you can imagine, the patricians were not all that happy with such a bill, but they didn't really have much of a way of stopping it. They were able to successfully debate and delay the bill until the following year, in 471 BCE. In this year, Valerio Publius and his colleagues pushed for the bill even harder, and they succeeded in getting it brought before the assembly for voting. During this time, they also raised a second issue. The number of tribunes was not fixed by any law, so why not increase the amount of tribunes? Well, Valerio thought it was a good idea, and a law was proposed to increase the number of elected tribunes to five, from the two currently. We are told that Valerio's colleague, Gaius Latorius, was an ardent supporter of both bills. Gaius also had been a soldier of high renown, and he spoke passionately for both laws. However, his rhetoric soon turned inflammatory, and the consul, Appius Claudius Crassus Enrigiliensis Sabinus, engaged him in some sort of violent confrontation and each man attempted to order the arrest of one another. This was the nail in the coffin for the bill, as the public fully got behind Gaius Latorius and his two laws, and called for the arrest of Appius Claudius. The other consul, Titus Quinticus Capitolinus Barbetus, brother of Cincinnatus, was forced to step in and escorted Appius Claudius away from the crowd and gave some sort of speech which calmed the crowd. However, the damage was done and the bill passed overwhelmingly. And thus, the tribunes were now five in number, and were elected via the tribal assembly. This removed much of the influence that the patricians held over the voting, as it diluted the strength of their patronage. This was yet another step in the conflict of the orders, and one that brought the tribunes closer to a sort of protector of the plebeians. Of course, there was still much to do, but this was a start. The senate and the patricians would have a much harder time influencing or rigging the elections of the tribunes, and now had gained a powerful possible enemy. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. I know this video was a little short, but we will have quite a few of these over the next little while, as much of our study of the conflict of the orders will now be done via various laws. If you have any comments or questions on the video, or believe I've made a mistake, please comment down below, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed, it really helps the channel out. Peace.